sometimes fishing just needs to be fun and the joy is in just moving around the river and presenting your fly and feeling good about your presentation so much of the time with Euro nymphing I see fishermen get bogged down with trying to tie fine tippet and two fly rigs and they're snagging the bottom and sometimes you just need to go and move and fish and enjoy yourself it can be very effective and very refreshing what I like to do a lot of especially around log jams and sticks and complex water like this is I fish one single fly, one single anchor fly that can be twitched and moved. This one happens to be a TJ hooker, but you can do this with little tungsten jig head buggers, zertle bugs that we sell at Reds, little jig sculpins, and a few other flies like a crayfish. I will, I will link some products in the video description, but with this fly, uh, I can fire it in behind the logs like so, and if I don't have a good drift, I can twitch it and move it, I could even strip it across there. Um, whereas a small nymph is not gonna be very effective. I can still dip, 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 and go down and hit the bottom and get good contact and lead it through just like that. I could still do all of that stuff, but I could have a lot of fun doing it because I could fish a little heavier line, one single fly, very few snags tangles. And when I work around all these complex pieces of structure, I have a, I know exactly where my fly is because I've just got one single fly on there and I can move around the river. It works good if you have a lot of space to roam because a bigger fly, it's like kind of one and done on the presentation. So if you have a lot of space to roam, you can move around quite a bit. Maybe you hike and you move well and you can jump from spot to spot to spot. This is a great strategy. So follow along with me today. We're gonna try to get a few fish and uh, show you that you could be successful with just fishing one single fly and it's a great time and a lot of fun. Okay, so there's a little guy we just got after making that first video. And what I was doing here, that's a big, uh, just number six, uh, Rio Silistone, which I cut the legs off of those a little bit to shorten them and stiffen them up. It's got a great big bead, so it's super heavy. And I can change faster when I have one fly on. There's a bit of a stone fly hatch going. And uh, let's just take a look at the water that little guy was in there. Uh, we did the intro to the video up in the logs. Now when I was coming back down, I need I felt like I needed more weight to drop it down this hill. So just one single fly, switched it real quick, and uh, drop it up here in the gravel. Okay, watch this. It's in the shallows. Now as it's going into the green, that's when I just hit the plunger and I dip, 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 and I just work it right down the hill just like that right there with that big heavy fly. We'll do it one more time. So I switched, this is a very heavy fly, heavier than the first one I was fishing with. But I got to this hill and I needed to change and dip, 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 dip. But I just lower it down, lower it down, lower it down. There we go. So just dropping it off a pretty typical ledge on my way back downstream. All right, that was a lot of fun. So that fish was way up under that brush right there. And uh, part of it, you know, like I said, it's we're not always going to fish a single fly, but part of the part of the enjoyment of it is it's very accurate and easy to cast. So I was able to fire it right up under those sticks. Not a bad trout. We'll take it. But I was able to fire. Good, get a look here. I was able to fire that fly right up under that that tree canopy there. There you go, good barbless hook, already undone, already gone, there we go. But I was able to fire my fly way up under there and get it to settle in just right. A little bit more difficult to do with two flies, so. And of course you can do that with two, but I'm a little less courageous uh, working around the sticks with two flies because inevitably one of them will spin, spin, spin around the stick and I'll be snagged. But with one fly, oftentimes I can just kind of like shake it out a little bit. Man, so that fish, this is a pretty nice one. I swear that thing, I don't know what it was thinking, but it ate it right when it hit. Like it just smacked the water. And I'm telling you, if you hadn't made a good cast, like almost like a terrestrial, but as a nymph. Yeah, that's a pretty nice trout right here. Oh man, I don't know if you can 
can see that on the video or not. That's a solid rainbow. I'm gonna land them quick. It's summertime. Good fish. All right. There we go. He just hammered that. So that, that was absolutely awesome. So that fish was right in behind that tree right there. And I just took and dropped my fly. Let's see if we can get another one. I dropped it in, fly first like that. And that fish just swirled at it right when it hit. And we do it again one more time. Oh, of course I bounced off the tree. Right there, like that. And then I have my cider all up in the air immediately. And I'm telling you, if that fish had seen a bobber land or even multiple flies or anything, I'm not positive it would have eaten. I know it wouldn't have eaten a big splash from a bobber. But even with a weighted fly like this with a Euro rig, you just go plop and it's almost like a natural sound like the dinner bell. We're going to keep working down this channel and see if we can get another one. All right. Another decent trout on. Not, not as big as the last one, but I'm delighted to have it. That was a really nice strike. And one thing that I did to, to help me get this fish is uh, we walked downstream. The 12 incher will take it. I'm still running just that single stone fly. Um, no reason to change. The weight works. Get, get him released. I think all fit, wild trout need to be released quick. So what we did is we got this big tree right here. And if you walk, like I, I didn't fish it a lot when I was walking down because I'd have a good angle, but I kind of walked down and then passed back up into a little alley or a pocket between the branches. And it, it took like all my willpower to not throw a lot of casts coming in, but I waited until I could make an incision uh, up into the tree branches. Let me get this little tangle undone and then I'll throw a cast or two just to kind of show you what I mean. So I'm casting this kind of back upstream and um, there's an alley right there. There's an opening and I walk down here and I can throw right up into that opening like so and throw right back in there to set my drift up right. So I'm back in that opening like that. And uh, a lot of people think with Euro nymphing that you don't have to be a good cast or you don't have to be accurate. But I'm telling you what, like I'm trying to hit like paper plate size spots and uh, it really helps to have good control of that cast. I'm using a 3X tippet. It's a little bit stiffer with these bigger flies and I'm only running about three to four feet of tippet below my cider material so I have real good casting control. But we'll keep working down. Let's see if we can get enough. So now I'm walking upstream and I'm not in the log sticks, brush and all those technical spots. I've got like a really traditional riffle right there. Now, a lot of times with a, like the preferred Euro setup, you've got like two flies in a junction and just sometimes adding a second fly is not really convenient because I'd like to run just another small nymph or a small nymph through there. There's nothing that says you can't tie your small nymph just as a trailer, like a traditional trailer right off the back I can take that on and off. It's 16 inches behind my, my anchor fly or my stone fly. Makes it really quick to change. Now I can pop out in the riffle and throw a small nymph as well as the big one. When I get upstream into some log jams and more technical water again, I'll probably cut that second fly off because more flies often equal more headaches, but that's a really quick, easy way that is somewhat uh, just not typical of the Euro nymph fisherman to just tie it in a trailing system. Well, that worked out just as planned. I, uh, no sooner, nice trout, nice trout. No sooner did I put that second fly on there. And if it would have been required me like tying a surgeon's knot or a junction, I probably wouldn't have done it. I, I just want to go fishing today. It's a beautiful day and I don't want to spend my time tying knots. So I put that, uh, oh, stay out of those sticks. Um, I put that second fly on there which is one of my favorites. It's a Duracell jig by Fulling Mill. We sell it at Reds. And uh, got that gorgeous trout. Man, that's a nice fish. Um, let me get him unhooked and we'll get a quick look. Really close. Camera half in the water. 
So there he goes. The gorgeous fish. On that small little bonus bug, quick change tip for you. Just trail it right off the back. Don't worry about always having to do the little surgeon's junction for two Euro nymphs. Got him. <laughs> that is way too much fun. Uh, something I, I, not a big fish, but yeah, I had a couple bites there and thought that I might get another one. Um, let's get him undone. He he bit that that TJ hooker, which is kind of like a jig streamer type thing. Uh, I'll show it to you again. You've seen it in maybe the video description or the product tag. But um, one thing, I will show you what I was doing there. And one thing is. When you have a leggy fly on there like that, something that indicator fishermen could never do is there's a little slow section in this pool right here. And what I can do with a, with a tight line rig and a leggy fly is I can, you know, naturally I can I could drop my fly in and I could get my presentation and dink it along the bottom. There was a bite right there. Didn't expect that. Uh, but when it gets down into the slow part of the pool, I can actually kind of jig and manipulate. Now what I like to do is I like to just just kind of gently when I feel like I'm in contact but there's not enough current to push the fly along because that's a heavy fly then I can just sit there and I can kind of rattle my rod and agitate that nymph and you still have to lead it so like you can cross lead it and bring it across current if it's in a back eddy you might actually be leading this way with the main current and then it goes in the back eddy and then I'm going to draw it around and go this way but when I do that I like to rattle the rod just the tiniest bit, just super teeny tiny bit. With an 11 foot rod like this, the tiniest motion back here makes a lot of movement in the tip. So just rattle that thing and don't be afraid to, to move those flies right across the bottom in some of these slower spots when the current fails to push your heavy fly through. All right, I just got this little guy here. And uh, of course it's on that, okay, he's off. Uh, that's just fine. So the tip I want to give here is this, this is a high bank situation. And a lot of people don't like to fish high bank situations. They don't understand how to weight them and what to do. And this is true of Euro nymphing and just traditional fly fishing, I guess. Is with the high bank, just get comfortable being up here on the shore. Don't feel like you always gotta be in the river. And I'll just, I'll live fish here for just a minute, see if we can't get another guy. But I'm gonna stay back and I'm just gonna fish right off my rod tip. There's a fish right there. And I'm going to fish right off my rod tip. Watch out for these trees. And I'm going to stand back here because my rod's 11 feet that I'm using. So I don't want to spook the fish. But I also have a rod that's pretty long, so I'm going to stay back like so. And I'm going to fish right at my feet right here. There was a grab. Uh, it just he spit it out so quick. It was a light take. I should have lit him up on that. There he was. Too fast for me, apparently. But that's just your basic high bank fishing. Stay high and dry, fish right off your rod tip until you get to that nice gravel bar where you can get back in and get your feet wet one more time. All right, so I get another, another one on here. Nice little trout. So this is an example of fishing the high bank. And uh, so I'm just staying up here on the shore because most of the fish are just right off my rod tip here. And it's kind of fun to do with your, your, your Euro rig because you have to fish close to yourself anyway. Come on, little guy. Release him. Nice, nice 10 incher. So what I'm doing on this high bank, and I, you know, I would prefer to do it with just a single fly like this because there's so many snags and tangles, but Basically, I'm gonna get my fly out into a safe place because I've got this tree here and all this tall stuff here. And I'm taking, I call this point blank range fishing. I'm basically just dropping it in right up above me. And I may even take a step back. I was a little close for landing that fish. And then I'm fishing like literally right off my rod tip underneath this cut bank that's at my feet right there. So you don't always have to find a hole. You don't always have to be standing in the water. These high banks can be very productive. Just keep it simple. If you're new to doing that kind of fishing, that one fly rig is like a nice way to practice and just get good at all the line handling and the hook setting and all the other stuff that takes place uh, in addition to catching fish. Some of the other stuff you just gotta get some reps in to get good at. 
Here are a few of the flies, and these are certainly not all of them, but they're kind of a random assortment of flies that I would use for this type of fishing where I'm just fishing one fly very aggressively. And I might use a TJ hooker uh, in a couple of various sizes. There's another one, or there's two other ones called uh, Jiggy Pats that I really like. Uh, a big prince nymph works good. Maybe you don't have stone flies uh, in your river, but maybe you have large swimming mayfly nymphs uh, would be, uh, you know, that can imitate pretty much anything, an October caddis pupa. Uh, a gold jigger is very good, but it doesn't weigh a lot. So if you're in slower water, small stream, where you might be casting and stripping, a little Rio's gold jigger is pretty nice for that. If you really need to get down uh, and get way under some boils and log jams, that thing sinks, I mean, like faster than a rock. That's the Cussinet streamer uh, jig sculpin. Uh, that we sell and that one's like the one I use when I've got big boils and really really need to get down and then uh, this is called a meat sweats from Rio what's cool about this one is it's got weight on the belly so it always rides hook up and uh, but the eyes are positioned high like a sculpin's eyes but it also has a jig head hook and a short shank hook and so that one does really well when I can let this grind the bottom and then kind of lift and scoop and swing out uh, at the end so those are just a few of the flies that I like to fish for this. This single fly aggressive style of fishing is really a lot of fun. And it's like, I think I mentioned this before, but it's just kind of like joyful to just go fishing and not worry so much about snagging and tangles. And you'll have plenty of opportunity to get tangles and trees and logs and things if you fish the kind of water I was today. But I want to talk to you a little bit about like the gear I'm using, what I think is recommended if you enjoy this style of kind of like micro jig and streamer fishing uh one is i don't like a mono leader setup just in general i've played with a lot of different things and some older videos i probably have some long mono rigs and whatnot i like my fly line and this is an, a competition series fly line from sa it's crazy thin but whether you have like a rio phipps or like the rio uh technical mono that's a great line too uh or the sa competition whatever it is I like to have a couple feet of that line out the tip. I think my casting control with bigger flies is better and I'm quicker and the line is easier for me to handle for this type of fishing where I'm moving a lot. If I were fishing a pool with some highly selective trout and I'm not moving a lot in one spot and I'm fishing little flies like 16s, 18s, even 20s, certainly running mono all the way down, super long leader technical system would be superior, no doubt about it. But for this, when those fish pick up a, a sculpin or a, uh, a stonefly nymph, you're gonna know it. It's quite an aggressive take. It's very exhilarating, actually. So I like a shorter leader. I like my leader no more than, than two feet longer than my rod. So I have an 11 foot rod. This is a Shadow X, uh, which I like the Shadow X. Uh, it's a pretty good rod. Um, not my favorite rod. I'm not gonna try to tell you it's better than some of the high end stuff, but it's a good rod. Uh, a couple of things about the Shadow X, like it's been fished a lot and uh, it just comparing it to my sage and my thomas and thomas rods the cork is a little squishy on this one uh you can see it's been heavily heavily used uh the rings come loose a little bit uh on here but i do really like being able to add weights on an 11 foot rod i've got my sage esn reel and i've got all the weight kicked to the back and all the weight in here and i like how that balance is really tip up and it's actually not that far tip up uh, as far as uh, cider material goes and a leader build, um, you could use, doesn't matter to me, you can use fluorocarbon, you can use mono, whatever you want, but something around that 12 to 16 pound range, uh, not super picky about it. And I take that right into a 1X cider material and my whole leader is 1X or my whole cider is 1X. And I will dip right into my cider material with this setup because I've got to keep that big heavy jig fly off the bottom, keep it high, and then dunk it in the pools. And I will put the cider in. On my little fly rigs, I try to keep the cider out almost exclusively. I've got a few little tags tied in there you can see for depth gauges, depth markers. And then my leader is about three to four feet. I keep it pretty short and sweet so that I have very good cast and control and I've got 3X fluorocarbon tippet, which is about as heavy as I like to run. Uh, and then I've got a loop knot tied to my jiggy pats right there, which my jiggy pats, maybe it's a stonefly, maybe it's a crayfish, a sculpin, depending on how much I'm twitching it, how much I'm moving it and really getting after it. But this is an extremely fun way to fish. 
The last thing I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with is the casting here is and can be very technical if you're gonna work cut banks and you're gonna work log jams and stick piles and under trees. You need to be a good caster in order to do that. And so I think getting a lot of reps with these setups is important. Uh, one thing on casting is I generally try to keep constant pressure on the rod. Not So I'm going to swing my rod tip around almost like a helicopter cast or a Belgian wind cast. And I can have very good control of that cast. With a weighted fly, if I try this stop and start 10 and 2 type motion, that fly just goes back, finds the end of the line, and goes boing, and makes a whole bunch of tangles. It's bad news. So constant pressure, uh, a, a very gradual acceleration with a nice, strong, snappy finish at the end of your cast is going to allow you to stop the rod high, plop the fly in first, make the fly land nicely, and hopefully my cider makes is the last thing to make contact after my fly tip it cider. So... Drop my fly in, kerplunk, my cider's still out, and then I can begin to dip down if I want, but my fly has to hit the water first. It's a great thing to practice, especially with one fly. A lot of people would call that a tuck cast, where we're tucking that fly up under the tippet. Really critical for a lot of these real tight spots and heavy cover around log jams and, and such. So I hope you enjoyed these tips today. Like, subscribe, to, uh, or subscribe to the channel, like the video. Leave a comment. I try to get back to all of them. Uh, if you have uh, ideas, encouragements, or advice for other fishermen, leave it in the comments below.